Hey Reefers YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Dreaming Reef. So for today's video, right, we are going to sidetrack a bit from our LFS tour because we are going to do a NDP special. So for those of you guys who are not my fellow Singaporean friends, you will not know that this weekend we actually celebrate our 54th birthday as a country, which is our national day. So today's video is going to be a bit special we are going to focus on Singapore so which brings me out into C for this particular episode so for most of you guys who is in the ornamental trade will be wondering so what has Singapore has been doing in terms of this industry not just say ornamental but food fish as well in the aquaculture um, facility and how our Alka culture business are going off so to actually give you guys an understanding on how our aquaculture facilities our industry is growing I need to bring you guys a trip up into St. John's Island so you can take a ferry from the Marina Bay ferry terminal so the ferry it's relatively cheap if you're taking the cruise tour but it will take you directly on to St. John's Island so on St. John's Island, right, we house a couple of uh, marine aquaculture facilities. We have the Marine Aquaculture Centre, which is run by our Singapore Food Industry, which I will bring you guys a tour later. And then we will be heading up to TMSI, which is also funded by NUS. So we will show you guys the area around here and we will bring you guys right up to the facility. So once you enter St. John's Island, you will need to pass by this little chalet here. And yes, even though the island is a bit small and creepy, but you actually can stay in that chalet over there. If you kind of feel a bit adventurous, you can actually stay the night over here. But I highly doubt that you guys don't really give it a try. So you have to walk this treacherous uphill, which I always hate to go up because it's super long it's always very hot and when you reach to the end of it you will see this little sign that states the tropical marine science institute which is tmsi and the marine aquaculture center and so which i will bring you guys a tour into our marine aquaculture center right so for those who've been wondering what marine aquaculture center does so this is an area that's actually run by our government so the AVA, the Singapore Food Industry basically they have this research R&D area where they do mainly on food fishes so one thing it's very famous for them is their Asian sea bass so there's something called the St. John sea bass which is basically a faster growth rate sea bass so we all start our aquaculture with the food for our larvae so here you can see this is where they culture all their algae so their micro algae, their phytoplanktons it's very interesting because they actually kept them in this plastic bag thingy with just lights from one side and then this is the couple of micro algae species they have that is being cultured here they have from the nanos to the tetras all the way to the isos so this is what used to feed the zooplankton's and also to use this as a green blanket for most of their larvae fries. So once we're done with the phytoplankton, we move on to something bigger for the larvae which is actually your zooplankton's. So over here you see this is their rotifer culture. So rotifers are part of zooplankton that is actually very important for the aquaculture business because most of your fish larvae fits on them first before you can actually win them into pellets or even to frozen food so it's a very interesting very simple setup it's just a tub where they have rotifer cultures growing in it and the next room over here we have is the slightly larger zooplankton which is the artemia so we had a chance to actually see one of their harvesting it's very interesting because they don't really use bleach for decapsulation of artemia what they did over here is they use magnet to actually remove these the shells from the artemia egg itself so as we move on to the next part of the tour we will be showing you the brood stock for the asian sea bass so this is their brood stock area where they house all of their asian sea basses 
So the very interesting thing about the Marine Aquaculture Center is they actually do what they what we call is a selective breeding of aquaculture fish. So basically by picking out the desirable traits we want in this particular fish, we are able to selectively breed them to gain the offspring which it's for that desirable trait. So for example, for the Asian seabirds, we want them for faster growth. So the faster they grow in a shorter of time, meaning we can actually harvest them and sell them at a shorter period of time. So over here at MAC, they actually do this um, selective breeding program here where they actually have the generations of Asian sea bears actually being selectively bred and they can actually go up to more than 30% increase in their growth rate. So they have a little poster here in their Asian sea bears brood stock which basically they use what they call as the MAS. So it's the marker assisted selection. So over here you get to pick out the traits that you want and then after that you from then on you choose the selective markers for the selective breeding. So the next part of it we will show you is the the fry culture, the larvae area. So this itself is a closed system, it runs on a very impressive RAS system. So as we will see over here, they show you the early stage of the larvae development. So from yolk sick all the way down, you can see they actually fed on green water over here and then they actually fed with zooplankton's until they are being weaned into pellet foods when they hit a certain age of their time. So here you can actually see stages of the larvae. So here is the very very small free floating, the free swimming larvae stage. And they also have a lot of different kinds of features as well. So here is one stage of the snapples that is actually being raised and reared within this area over here. So as you can see over here, there are rows and rows and rows of tanks and each tank consists of different age group of that particular fish species that is being kept here. They are being grown up before they are actually shipped out to most of the other farms and area around the world. And moving on from the food fish, we will head over to what most of us are very interested in which is the ornamental site. So right beside the MAC, it's actually the TMSI. So they actually just recently built up this viewing gallery area where you can actually drop by for free, go in and actually see the couple of different projects they've been doing. So for the Marine Aquaculture Center over here, right, they actually does things like your coral propagation out into our Singapore waters. So you can actually see this timeline once you enter this area these are a couple of different things they set up out in our Singapore waters like the nursery table where they bring out corals to grow in our Singapore waters do documentation on them and you can actually see the couple of designs that they have going on so aside from seeing all the prototypes and the structures of what you will be able to get to see out in our waters they also have this timeline here where they actually do the conservation work in our Singapore water region so it's very interesting because even though we are a country that is not very popular in terms of like scuba diving and all the only places we have is like Pulau Hantu for diving and our visibility and our life is not that diverse compared to other places in Indonesia and in the Philippines but we are actually trying the, the marine park is actually doing a lot of coral plantings within the region you actually can get to see quite a lot of fishes, quite a lot of inverts we are quite well known for nudies, the nudibranchs we have quite a lot of different nudibranchs around there and you also get to see like different types of corals from hard to soft in our Singapore waters so if you guys are very interested you guys can actually head over here and actually check out if you really want to know more about what we have in our Singapore waters right this is one place to actually come and visit Grab one of their staff over here, check them out, look, get more questions from them and actually be able to have a better understanding of what we have in terms of our marine biodiversity in the region around us. So aside from all the posters and all the documentations and all the education infographics they have in the room itself, right? They actually have an outdoor area where they actually shows you live stuff. So once we're done here, I will bring you guys outside and I will show you guys what I meant by live stuff. 
So they actually have rows and rows of tanks here where they display corals that are actually being brought back from the ocean right out of St. John's Island to Sisters Island and all the neighbouring Singapore islands. So they have this saltwater pond here where they do taggings of corals, they do studies, they do documentation of all the coral groves in terms of Singapore waters and then they also do like planting studies of all the different types of these corals that are being able to found in our water which is very interesting because we always talk about aquaculture, we always talk about mariculture, we always talk about culturing more corals, taking lesser from the ocean so having a movement like this that actually works to give back the ocean instead of us always taking so much is very crucial to our hobbies and the entire ornamental trade sustainability for the next couple of years or even the future like most of us will say that actually the aquaculture the captive breeding is the future for the entire industry throughout the world so they do have a lot of different kind of soft corals to even hard corals in the pond itself and it's a very interesting place if you ever have a chance to actually head over to St. John's Island do head over to this center over here you can actually do learn a lot and have a better understanding of our Singapore waters and what we actually have in our ocean itself Okay, so we have come to the almost to the end of it and I'm going to split this into two parts because First up, I'm going to show you guys the MAC and second part, I will be doing a NDP giveaway. So for this NDP giveaway, right, we are going to give one lucky winner a limited edition Supreme Coral hat for free. So yes, Supreme Coral actually gave us one of their exclusive caps. So this cap is not for sale. You cannot buy it off their shelf. It is a gratitude that they actually gave to all the supporters that has been supporting their shop for the couple of months ahead which they are actually giving away this very special cap so the cap is not cheap it's actually costing them about 55 US dollars if I'm not wrong so they actually gave us one to actually do this giveaway for you guys so really big thanks to Supreme Corals for doing this NDP giveaway with us so the next thing you guys want to know is how do you guys win this very limited edition exclusive Supreme Coral Caps. So all you got to do, three things. First thing you need to do, subscribe to this channel. Hit the subscribe button below. Leave a comment below. And then follow their Facebook and their Instagram page. So we will be breaking up this video into two parts. For this will be the part one and then there will be a cut off which is the end of Friday night where Saturday I will actually do a random generator from the comment section below and I will actually randomly generate one lucky winner to actually walk away with this exclusive Supreme Coral hat so if you want to know more information about how to actually win this limited edition Supreme Coral cap all you gotta do is just check the link below I will actually write down a description on how to actually participate in this giveaway so for next upcoming the part 2 video I will be sharing with you guys this new 14 gallon nano tank build that I've recently done up in the studio at home so it's very interesting because I will give you guys a sneak peek of what is going to be in that 14 gallon innovative marine tank so no further ado, I will give you guys a sneak peek, a little teaser video on what is coming up next week. So I hope you guys stay tuned, hope the one lucky winner will walk away with the Supreme Coral Limited Edition cap. And don't, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like their Instagram page, follow their Facebook page, and I will see you guys real soon next week.